Lime Rock Park. It's a fantastic little track, isn't it? It's one of the classic American road racing venues, entertaining Connecticut crowds since 1957. Its layout is one many sim racers will be intensely familiar with. It's part of iRacing's base content, and it's always in the Rookie Series rotation. Plus, R Factor 2 has a lovely version of it as well. Lime Rock is short but fast, with every turn bar one being a right-hander. The first half of the lap is marked by cambered, sweeping turns, which invite you to go just a little further. Whispering in your ear like, hey, hug that curb a little closer. Hmm? Oh yeah, brake and turn at the same time. There you go. Hey, I made this inside curb flat just for you. Give me some of that late apex action. Straighten up on the power. Ooh, I know you like that. And this is getting a little weird now, so I'm going to stop. It's basically got some excellent flow to it. The second half scales a hill where you can catch some air if you're going fast enough. <laughs> which you should be because it's all about carrying momentum through these turns. As you plunge back down the hill and the track levels out, the compression drives the tires into the road, giving you the grip you need to sail through the last corner. A brilliant circuit. But could it have been even more brilliant? That's the question I want to ask today because the original idea for this circuit was pretty spectacular. Next time you're driving Lime Rock on your favourite sim, take a look at the runoff area at the end of the main straight. It looks as if the straight should continue up the hill. Now, extending a strip of asphalt for runoff is nothing new, certainly not unique to Lime Rock, but in this case, it's the only remaining clue that there were greater things planned for this circuit. Back in the latter half of the 1950s, Jim Vale and John Fitch worked together to plan the layout of Lime Rock Park. Mr. Fitch was a racer himself, and quite successful too. For just one example, with Phil Walters, he won the 12 Hours of Sebring in 1953. A somewhat sadder distinction, though, was that Fitch was Pierre Levet's teammate in the 1955 24 Hours of Le Mans. Motorsport's blackest day when Levet's Mercedes was launched into the crowd, taking the lives of he and 85 spectators. Fitch was one of the first on the scene. Being so close to the worst accident in the history of racing motivated him to pursue better safety standards for highways and racetracks, and he would dedicate the rest of his life to this. Those sand-filled barrels you might see at the start of a highway off-ramp? John Fitch designed that type of barrier, among many other safety innovations that we take for granted now. Lime Rock comes into this because Fitch designed the circuit using highway safety principles, the first time that had ever been done for a racetrack in North America. The circuit that he and Vale initially penned is the subject of this video. And it would have been immense, climbing up the side of Forge Mountain and plunging back down again in a series of high-speed sweeps and kinks. The layout we know today would have been the short configuration of this larger venue, but presumably for budget reasons, the longer layout was abandoned, even though the trees along the planned route had already been cut down. So another layout lost to the sands of time? Well, not quite. Unlike my videos about Spas and Suzuka's proposals, you can click up here to watch them, you can get a taste of what this circuit might have been like from the comfort of your home. The Lime Rock Mountain Circuit was recreated nearly 20 years ago by Brent Adams as a free mod for Papyrus's Grand Prix Legends. Dan Olbuck later released a version of it for NASCAR Racing 2003, and it's Olbuck's version that is the base for what we're looking at today. Over the years, the track found its way to other PC sims like Simbin's GTR2 and Race 07, but I'm going to highlight the conversion to the original R Factor by Phil Rob, with enhancements by James over at Race Department. I've put links in the description to this and as many of these versions as I can find. Anyway, let's jump in a classic machine that might have raced here back in the day and see what it's like. Oh, come on, you know I had to choose a Corvette, right? So to start off, the elevation change after the current turn one is immense. You're almost driving into the side of the mountain. 
It's very reminiscent of the first turn run-ups at the Red Bull Ring and the Circuit of the Americas, but where those turns are medium or slow speed, Lime Rock Mountain's first turn, Vale's Bend, is fast and the introduction to a flowing S section. Climbing up and up and up in second gear, the trees and armco barriers are breathing down your neck. You gotta keep it tight because you want it into turn two nice and wide. A beautiful sweeping corner that crests the hill. Hug the left side of the road, which is harder than it looks, and keep it in second for turn three, the Beagle's Nest. You can get on the throttle earlier than you think, but don't touch the curbs. They're a bit slippery for some reason. Bearing left out of this flat out meander called Showfield, just going through the dip, we come to my favourite turn on this digital approximation, Clee Curve, a flowing right that you enter over the top of this hill. It's second into third gear on the exit. It's hard to pick the right point to start accelerating, but once you do, the bowl-like nature of this corner gives you a mammoth launch. Down Smith's straight, which isn't very straight, keep the right pedal pinned through this downhill S-bend, then stay right as the track drops away and break hard for the entry to the hind hairpin. Tight, but faster than it looks. The last turn before we cross the bridge and rejoin the track as we know it. From there, it's Lime Rock. A single tightening left-hander, then four sweeping rights to finish the lap, each with their own spicy flavor. I should address at this point what some of you are probably thinking. This track does not look the most modern. It's a mod for an older sim, converted from an even older sim than that, and in those even older sims, it looks even more turn of the millennium. That said, this version available on Race Department has much improved textures and uh, really does look nice to drive around. The track model itself also might be a bit too wide, maybe a bit too smooth, though there are some extra bumps added in the R Factor version. By and large, this is a sim racing mod of its time, but I still think it's a fun and approximate recreation of Lime Rock's original plan. If Brent Adams and Dan Olbuck are still around, I want to let them know their work is appreciated, even decades later. So what do I think of this layout? Well, Lime Rock as it is now is a unique ride, fast and flowing, rising and diving, and short, very short. This track is rapid, whether you're watching a real life event or having a steer in the sim. To me, this mountain layout does many of the same things from a driving experience point of view, just over a longer distance. Sure, Big Bend is not there to catch us out, but in its place we get an opening sequence that's just mental. Every proper corner on this extension feels like an overtaking opportunity to me, at least in cars like the one I'm driving here. A slipstream down the front stretch sets you up for a pass into Vales. You can come back at arrival into Beagle's Nest, and even Clee, with its slightly tight entry and open exit, can be a passing zone for the brave and the stupid alike. And the hind hairpin? Well, it's a hairpin. It would have been Lime Rock's slowest corner. Very inviting for a sling up the inside. It's also worth noting how the character of the left-hander and S's is changed. More space to build up speed means the braking zone is longer. It's certainly possible to make moves into this corner now, but you usually need to get a massive run out of Big Bend or rely on your rival to make a mistake. The mountain extension goes some way to turning this into a proper outbraking opportunity. Like any short road course, Lime Rock can get a bit cramped in a large field, especially if there's multiple classes and the cars are quick, but the track's been around and established long enough that it's been accepted as part of the challenge. The mountain layout, if it had been completed, would have alleviated any space concerns. A longer front straight and a more typical track length means bigger series with faster cars like Can-Am and the various incarnations of IMSA's sports car championships would probably have gone for this layout over today's shorter one. We might have even seen more high level open wheel racing than there actually was. In any case, the first decades of this track's history would have looked very different if we had the mountain circuit. The question is, how long would it have survived? John Fitch's use of highway safety standards to design the circuit meant the track would have been safe for the time in which it opened, but I think we might have started seeing big safety concerns spring up as early as the mid 60s with how quick cars were getting even then, and certainly the 80s, 90s and early 2000s would not have been kind to this layout. 
There's not much space to widen the road if need be, plus runoff areas up the top would be sparing to start with. Increasing them would be expensive, if not a huge pain in the ass. You could probably say that for the current circuit as well, but they were able to install chicanes to bypass the worst areas for runoff, like the uphill. If the mountain circuit had been built and survived to the present day, we might have seen chicanes installed before Vales and Klee at the very least. Racing might have ended up constrained to the short circuit, so basically the situation today, or the track may have been closed altogether decades ago. Whichever way I look at it, I can't see this plan working today without significant investment in safety and layout changes. But at least we have this virtual time capsule that we can drive on any time we like. If you have one of the sims this track is available for, I highly recommend installing it. Graphically, it doesn't look as good as tracks in racing sims today, which is understandable considering how long ago it was made, but I don't really care about that. This is a rare, interactive window into a history that never was. I certainly enjoyed driving this circuit for the first time on Race 07 about 10 years ago and revisiting it for this video. I hope you give it a try. If you're one of those old timers who's been going to Lime Rock since Adam was a cowgirl, or even if you raced there back in the day, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this original proposal. Same for everyone watching. What do you think of this track? Do you think it could still work today? Leave a comment, and if you're so inclined, like, subscribe, and hit the bell. It helps me out, and you'll get notified when I upload next. This video was made possible by the wonderful people listed here, as well as my super serious supporters, Adam Miller, Ira Felberg, Jack Moore, Jay Kennedy, The Original Sticks, and Thomas Clarendon Blair. These people support me on Patreon, which helps me to keep the lights on and continue making videos like this for you. If you're interested in supporting me and my content, become a patron today at patreon.com slash southpawracer for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the first corner.